dancing to a new song with depressed people all over the world. That no one with any compassion in their head can live away from the scenes coming from Gaza on a daily basis without wanting to scream stop. We should all have been shouting stop since 1948 when millions of Palestinians were forcibly removed and transferred. We should have been shouting stop when Palestinians had their lands confiscated and their homes demolished. We should have been shouting stop when Palestinians were in prison without trial and forced to live in isolated and fragmented enclaves with limited freedom of movement. And we should have been shouting stop when successive Israeli governments transferred more than 700,000 settlers onto occupied Palestinian territories. We should have shouted stop, and I know many of you, you all did, when Israel created separate legal and administrative systems for Palestinians and Israel, Israelis. We are all shouting stop now. I want to draw to your attention the plight of thousands of workers from Gaza held in detention for several weeks following the October 7th attacks and subject to inhumane and degrading conditions as documented by Human Rights Watch. While around 3,000 workers have since returned to Gaza and the West Bank, an estimated 18,500 workers from Gaza have permits to work in Israel on October 7th Though it is unclear how many were in Israel then, the situation of thousands of workers from Gaza who fled or released to the West Bank remains unclear. Gaza has lost at least 61% of its jobs since the start of the Israel Hamas war. The United Nations Labor Agency has said, warning that the economic fallout will reverberate for many years to come. The Palestinian territories estimated employment losses are equivalent to 182,000 jobs. From combined job losses in two Palestinian territories translate into an estimated daily income loss of $16 million. We gather at the end of the week in which the International Court of Justice has heard the devastating evidence of South Africa's case against Israel. This week, the BDS National Committee issued a solidarity call that we at the ICTU will seek to respond to in an effective manner. As well as boycott and investment campaigns against strategic complicit targets, it calls for mobilizations like this one, seeking support by states for South Africa's case before the ICJ. Ireland must therefore issue a public statement of support for the South African demands for provisional measures to stop the genocide. <laughs> they must do this by imposing an immediate permanent ceasefire, lifting the deadly siege allowing essential goods and services into Gaza, defeating the US Israeli plans for forced displacement of the Palestinians in Gaza. The South African case unequivocally condemns the targeting of Israeli civilians and other nationals and hostage taken by Hamas and other Palestinian armed groups. However, they emphasize genocide is never justified. Lighter sister organization in South Africa comes out to we fully support the South African case as courageous international leadership and meaningful solidarity. Because they have, despite Netanyahu's pro protestations, it is clear that Israel is determined to exploit the horrific events of October the 7th. It's using that opportunity to do what it has always desired to do in a way. Depopulate Gaza of Palestinians through killings, mass home demolition, the spread of starvation, thirst and infectious disease, and eventually mass expulsion. As the BDS National Committee has said, if not now, when, 
The time is now to take action to join the movement for freedom, justice and equality in Palestine. Free Palestine, ceasefire now.